I should like to tell you that I have seen some of the experiments shown in this film actually carried out at the All-Russian Physiological Congress. As you can imagine, technique is everything. Besides such work as you are about to see, Ryukhonenko shares the credit for the methods of human blood transfusion which were first developed in the Soviet Union and are now practiced in this country which have saved so many lives during the war. What enabled Soviet scientists to solve this problem? Long ago, science established the fact that animal organs and tissues isolated from the whole organism can be maintained in a living state. But in order to achieve this, special artificial conditions must be created. Isolated organs can be brought to life even though they've been removed from the animal's corpse some time after death. Here's a dog's heart. It can function as well in artificial conditions as in a living organism. And for this purpose, blood is introduced into the cardiac vessels. The isolated heart beats just as it did a few hours previously in the living dog. The following experiment is conducted on lungs taken from an animal. Bellows distend the lungs and fill them with air. The venous blood is forced into the lungs by the action of the pump. The dark venous blood passes through this tube. In the lungs, it takes up oxygen and becomes arterial blood. The isolated lungs breathe, producing the same chemical changes as in the living animal. An animal's head can also live in the isolated condition. Here is the plan of the experiment. The arterial pump takes arterial blood from the reservoir to the head, while the venous pump drains off the venous blood. The blood is arterialized in the reservoir, where there is a steady flow of oxygen. The artificial blood circulation ensures the metabolism necessary for the life of the head. The isolated head lives on for hours and reacts to external stimuli.
The isolated head even reacts to light and to sound. 